This video is the second update to the video titled Kerr Metric 2. It contains an alternative derivation for the coefficient of the d phi squared term of the Kerr line element. Now, many thanks go to the viewer named Erenium for pointing out this approach, whereas in the making of the video I'd use an approximation. This viewer has um, very cannily pointed out that an exact way through finding the coefficient of this d phi squared term can be found. And so many, many thanks to the viewer Erenium for pointing that out. So let's have a look. All right, so in the previous video on the Kerr line element, we found it to be ds squared was this wonderful, great expression here. Okay, um, in the boyer lindquist coordinates, t, phi, r, and theta. And we found that rho squared was this object here, delta was this expression here, and sigma squared was this. All right, now the first coefficient of the c squared dt squared in the line element, this term here, can be expanded out in terms of r, the distance from the source, the source mass, m, the source mass, a, the, uh, the radius of the mass, and some sine squareds and cos squareds. And we're able to approximate this with this term here. And that came about because a is fixed, cos squared varies, varies between 1 and 0, sine squared between 0 and 1, and uh, as r, as we move away from the source mass, r increases, but a remains constant, and in the end, r becomes a dominant term. And so the further away we move from the source mass, the more we can approximate this, just by dropping this out to zero. Uh, here, we found that this was approximately, given that cos squared varies between zero and one, its maximum value being one, that these uh, top line over the bottom line approaches one, because r squared a squared times this object at, in its maximum value in the uh, denominator there approaches a squared plus r squared. And so we could regard that as one, and then we're left with this object here. Remember that r squared plus a squared cos squared theta is just rho squared. Okay, so through an approximation, this can be rewritten as this. And this is more familiar in textbooks when you look for the line element and for the Kerr metric, you'll see this term here in front of the time coordinate differential. You'll see, so this found in the Kerr video, which was a subject of the um, Kerr video metric one and Kerr video metric two, um, gave us this form here. And we're going to rewrite this in a more familiar form to be found in the textbooks. So there's the first coefficient there. Um, and so let's move on and have a look. What we're going to do now over the next page on the next slide is we're going to look at another way of writing this expression here in front of the d phi squared term. All right. Okay, so expanding that out with the rho squared and the sigma squared, we have this object here, rho squared here, sigma squared in the square brackets here, sine squared on the end. Now let's expand this out where delta is, it's this object in here. And just going slowly and expanding things out carefully. All right, now we can expand out these parentheses here. a to the power of four plus two a squared r squared plus r to the power of four minus, expanding this out, multiplying everything in the parentheses here by a squared sine squared theta, this object here plus that one. And then we've still got this here. Let's go down now and just collect a few terms. We'll collect a to the power of four here and we'll take this a to the power of four sine squared theta and we'll put them next to each other so we can use a trig identity next line down, r to the four by itself, and we'll split this uh, two a squared r squared into a squared r squared, a squared times r squared plus a squared times r squared, and that'll make sense shortly um, because then we'll also arrange with that a squared r squared sine squared theta, that's this term here, and again, we'll be able to use a trigonometric identity on the very next line. So next line down, we'll have a to the power of four times that, which just came from here. Here, factor out the a squared r squared, left with one minus sine squared theta. Everything else otherwise remains the same. These come down here, these come down here. We get a to the power of four cos squared theta, 
plus these two terms untouched. And here we get a squared r squared times cos squared theta plus this object in here times that. All right, next line down. Um, what we'll then do here is we will collect the, um, we've got a squared r squared cos squared theta here and an a to the 4 cos squared theta. So we can collect that here and factor out a squared cos squared theta. That leaves us with a to the power of 2 here, which goes there. And the r squared here is goes here. So this middle term here is the same as, it's just this one and this one combined. And then over here we have r to the power of 4 plus a squared r squared. Now we can factor out an r squared there. So we'll have r squared outside of, in parentheses, r squared plus a squared. And that comes from these two terms right here. All right. Next line down, um, let's take out the common factor of r squared plus a squared in parentheses. That one and that one, factor that out. And we're left here with r squared plus a squared cos squared theta, which as we saw in a previous slide, is just equal to this row squared here. Okay, so write that there. Um, so we can replace that business here in the parentheses, r squared plus a squared cos squared theta with row squared. And out front we have one on row squared times everything in there. Well, multiplying that through, we'll, have, we'll be left with r squared plus a squared plus this, all of this times one on row squared, hence the row squared under here. There we go. And now removing excess uh, parentheses, we're left now with just r squared plus a squared plus this. No need to use an approximation as I did in the first video. I used an approximation because I had a uh, a one left over here and so by approximation I removed that but it's not necessary to do that and thank you to Arenium for pointing that out to me um, hence this update video so next part. so that gives us down here okay let's have a look now next so the line element we started with was this if you remember this and this and it's this term here and this term here we've been able to rewrite we found that this term here was approximately equal to this and this term here was exactly equal to this. So next line down, that leads us to the this final form, the Kerr line element that we've been after. Uh, gives us this here. And this is a more familiar form you'll find in textbooks. And this is how we arrived at it. And again, thank you to Arenium for that. Then finally, the Kerr metric can be written in this form here. And one last bit. So once again, here's our line element. Okay. And it's this form that satisfies the empty space field equations. Uh, subscript alpha beta is zero. So using this form of the metric from the previous slide, you'll find that you'll be able to satisfy the empty space field equations. And that's it. And again, thank you to the viewer, Arenium, for sharing with me um, his observation, his or her observation that um, there is an exact way of um, deriving this last coefficient here. So thanks again.